guess what today is. Ouch. Lunchtime, Paul? So what's the question? Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for all the Heathers the musical songs ranked. Honey, what you waiting for? For this list, we'll be looking at all the tunes from the musical based on the 80s cult classic movie and ranking them based on how they help fit into the storytelling and how captivating we find them. If you're unfamiliar with the story, be aware that there may be some spoilers up ahead. Listen up, Corn Nuts! It would be big fun if you shared your favorite Heather's track in the comments. Number 20. Blue if you're unfamiliar with this song, you probably haven't heard the original off-Broadway soundtrack. They're hanging sadly. What did they do to you that you hate them so? It appears during the scene where Veronica fights off Kurt and Ram's advances. Despite its bleak subject matter, the tune is rather lighthearted and gives off super problematic boys will be boys vibes. Baby, you got to come through. Teach them to smile. Understandably, some fans found this offensive and thought the writers were trivializing a serious and still very prevalent issue. The writers told Playbill that Blue was on their list of songs that needed to be changed or eliminated, but they'd simply run out of time. Given their audience's polarized feedback, its inclusion in the musical was short-lived and soon replaced. But more on that later. Please make their dreams come true. Number 19, Yo Girl. At this point in the show, the consequences of her entanglement with JD really start to haunt Veronica. Her conscience conjures up the ghosts of JD's crimes, to which she became an unwilling accomplice. She also learns that he'd fed her parents lies about her intentions to take her own life and fears she'll be his next target. I've been on the phone all morning. He's one step ahead of everybody. There's a doctor in Cleveland. Your parents, the police. We'd like you to talk with him. He's thought of everything, Veronica. Interestingly, the melody of Yo Girl mirrors Meant to Be Yours, which is the following number sung by JD. In both cases, the characters grapple with intense emotions and frantically seek a way out of their dire situations. However, they both come to drastically different conclusions, leading to the show's explosive climax. Veronica's done for this, we're done now, gonna fight next again. Veronica's trying to keep it out now, too late, he got in. Knock, knock! Number 18, Kindergarten Boyfriend. According to the show's writers, Lawrence O'Keefe and Kevin Murphy, this song was inspired by a real-life kindergarten love story. He didn't care if I was thin or pretty, and he was mine until we hit first grade. One of the writers became engaged to a classmate, only for her family to move away the following year. Similarly, Veronica's former best friend Martha mourns her lost love and generally despairs over the cruelty of high school. Now we recognize the way things are. Certain boys are just for kindergarten. Certain girls are meant to be alone. It's a sweet, stripped-down song that really tugs at those heartstrings. The writers noted that the lyrics don't rhyme as Martha feels too dejected to care about intricacies like that. The entire orchestra only joins in at the end when Martha chooses to leave her pain behind. It's beautiful, but it makes our hearts ache. We will fly through the dawn to a new Number 17, I Am Damaged. At less than 90 seconds, this is the shortest song on the Heather soundtrack. Even so, its impact is monumental. JD admits defeat and realizes this is his final chance at redemption. I am damaged. But you're different. You're the one we ought to spare. Throughout the show, he's preached about fixing the world, but at this moment, reality comes crashing down and he has no choice but to surrender. He pleads with Veronica to live her life to the fullest and make the world a better place in a way he never could. I'll trade my life for yours. Oh my God. And once I disappear, clean up the mess. 
Despite the inevitable, Veronica tries to save him until the very last second, but it's hopeless. In JD's final moments, he declares his love for Veronica one last time. Our love is God. <laughs> Say hi to God. Number 16, Never Shut Up Again. Since Blue was replaced in the show, its reprise was removed too. Instead, Heather Duke was given a brand new solo number where she celebrates her self-declared promotion in the social hierarchy. Girls like me don't climb high, can crack that ceiling, but now I scrape the sky, it's you who's me aiming. Until now, she's lived in Heather Chandler's oppressive shadow. But now she has the red scrunchie and plans to rule the school with an even tighter iron fist than her predecessor. The song's title is also poignant since Heather Duke was usually the one being told to pipe down by her former late friend. The inclusion of Never Shut Up Again meant that each Heather got a solo. This one's pretty tyrannical, but you gotta admit, it's super catchy. Number 15, My Dead Gay Son. This song takes inspiration from one of the film's most recognizable jokes. Admittedly, not one that's aged well. My son's a homosexual, and I love him. I love my dead gay son. Ram's homophobic father changes his tune when he believes his son died feeling ashamed of his sexuality. He berates Kurt's dad for his hard-heartedness in light of the tragedy, and eventually calls out his hypocrisy in an unexpected twist. That was one hell of a fishing trip. O'Keefe and Murphy explained that they didn't want to paint these fathers as, quote, goofy and out of touch. Instead, they wanted to delve into the complex emotions of parents just learning of their son's supposed sexualities and grappling with the grief of losing their children. Still, it's an upbeat and lively number that chooses to celebrate life and love. I love my dead gay son. Number 14, The Me Inside of Me. After JD turns Veronica into his unwilling accomplice, he convinces her to help cover up their crime. What would she say? What is her final statement to a cold, uncaring planet? They channel Heather Chandler with a note that quickly gets shared around the school. Before her death, Heather was feared, admired, and loathed. But thanks to Veronica and JD, everyone now thinks she's a saint. That's why she punched me in the face. Because she was desperate to connect. The writers explained that this song was essentially a parody of cheesy charity singles and how society tends to latch onto others' misfortune and make it about themselves. It's a poppy show tune with multiple mid-verse key changes and complex vocal arrangements. It's comically self-aware, self-indulgent, and one of the show's most challenging ensemble numbers. Well, at least Heather enjoys the attention. Number 13, Lifeboat. When Mrs. Fleming urges the students to open up about their feelings, only Heather McNamara bravely steps forward. Only she's quickly chastised by the other students, led by her so-called friend, Heather Duke. In this beautifully simple song, she voices her contempt for the savagery of high school politics and a fear of becoming a social outcast despite her popularity. If I say the wrong thing, or I wear the wrong outfit, they'll throw me right over the side. She imagines herself and her classmates crammed into a small lifeboat sailing across a stormy sea. Everyone's fighting for a place in a metaphor for social acceptance. Cold, clammy, and crowded. The people smell it desperate. We'll sink any minute, so someone must go. The tiniest lifeboat with people I know. The ending alludes that McNamara willingly gives up her spot. 
Perhaps she believed she'd be following in the footsteps of her deceased classmates. Still, the weakest must go. The tiniest lifeboat. Full of people I know. Number 12. Shine a Light After Kurt and Ram's funeral, Mrs. Fleming hosts a televised healing session, showing Westerberg's united and empowered front. Only she turns it into a huge spectacle and makes us wonder if she genuinely cares about the students' welfare or if she's just reveling in the attention. Regardless, this 60s hippie-inspired number is fun and lively, with just a touch of desperation from an authority figure trying to prove that they're down with the kids. Murphy and O'Keefe said they drew upon the well-intentioned yet painful assemblies they remembered from their high school days. Later, Heather Duke leads the song's mean-spirited reprise, manifesting as a nightmarish apparition in Heather McNamara's subconscious. Number 11, Our Love is God. The song's title was taken from a famous quote from the black comedy. Our love is God. Let's go get a slushie. The writers read between the lines of J.D.'s conceited declaration and created a romantic ballad with a sinister edge. Go on and cry, but when the morning comes, we'll burn it down and then we'll build the world again. Our love is God. At first, we think they're just expressing themselves in the overzealous way that teens in love often do. However, as the song builds, we realize JD's being very literal about his intentions, and even Veronica starts to notice red flags. It begins as a soft ballad and slowly builds into something more ominous and threatening. We can start and finish wars. We're what killed the dinosaurs. We're the asteroid that's overdue. By the end, JD's menacing crescendo has our hearts racing. The song marks the end of Act 1 and leaves us feeling uneasy throughout intermission. Number 10, You're Welcome. Remember how we said Blue was replaced with a new song? Well, this is it. Just trying to say in our friendly way that you've gotten hotter like every day. Taken from the high school edition of the musical, Your Welcome was a significant improvement over its predecessor. For one thing, this version gives Veronica a voice and reinstates some of her power. While Kurt and Ram continue to be sleazy, Veronica vocalizes her fear and comes up with a plan to get away from these drunken slime balls. They're a powder keg, so don't yell or beg. Stay friendly, then gently, accidentally sweep the leg. It's incredibly satisfying when she comes out on top and mockingly tells them that they're welcome. You smell like a sewage leak. You're welcome. We do, I'm pretty sure. This ain't mud, it's Calvador. The song still relies on humor, but at least in this version, Veronica's more empowered. Plus, it's as much, if not more, of an earworm as its predecessor. Number 9, Fight For Me. Veronica's already intrigued by the broody, mysterious new kid, but when he fights back against Jock's Ram and Kurt and wins, she finds herself all flustered. I shouldn't watch this crap. That's not who I am. But with this kid, damn. Veronica questions why she's so attracted to this enigmatic stranger and why this fight gets her motor running. In short, she has a thing for bad boys. Well, whoa. You can punch real good. You've lasted longer than I thought you would. It's a great song, but Andy Fickman's brilliant staging really pushes it over the edge. JD and the jocks hilariously fight in slow motion while Veronica watches on and sings. It's a genius way to put the audience in her mindset. 
there's some pretty graphic stuff going on. So why are we laughing? We don't condone fighting, but we can't look away either. It's fine if you don't agree, but I would fight for you if you would fight for me. Number 8. Big Fun Initially, the party scene featured a Beastie Boys-inspired number called Beer and Booze. It showed Veronica's disdain for her drunken classmates and her desire to leave high school behind. However, the writers thought it would be better if Veronica enjoyed herself as it would make her subsequent confrontation with Heather Chandler more impactful. I'm not alone, I'm not afraid, I feel like motto, I love it. <laughs> Big Fun, the name of a fictional band in the movie, served as the perfect title for this party anthem. Rooted in 80s dance music, the teens abandon all inhibitions and just let loose. A lot unfolds during this song, leading to the show's critical catalyst. Still, there's no denying how much this tune makes us want to have big fun. Number 7. Meant to be yours Despite all the terrible stuff JD's done, he's always managed to keep a self-righteous collectiveness about him. But Jason Dean is one complex individual, as this song shows. You left me and I fell apart, I punched a wall and cried, bam, bam, bam! The writers explain that the messy, chaotic melody, with its constant key changes, reflects the character's mindset at that moment. He's desperate, angry, sad, and more alone than ever. Especially now he thinks Veronica's dead too. His grief only fuels his determination to restore peace to the status quo, even if it involves taking out his entire school. This drama-filled number leaves us on edge. We wait with bated breath as JD vows to plow on with his misguided scheme. I can't do this alone. Still I will live number 6. Freeze Your Brain Murphy and O'Keefe hilariously explained that they needed a song to justify why an intelligent girl like Veronica would fall for someone like JD. So they borrowed a metaphor from Baudelaire's Flowers of Evil about drinking to numb pain and landed on Freeze Your Brain. Pray at my altar of slush. Yeah, I live for that sweet frozen rush. When JD and Veronica run into each other at a 7-Eleven, he tells her that he numbs himself with slurpy-induced brain freezes. The melody's hypnotic, but the jarring chord and key changes almost make us feel like we're the ones with brain freeze. Shut your eyes tight till you vanish from sight. Let nothing remain. And as JD becomes more impassioned, so does the music until it reaches a powerful crescendo. No wonder Veronica hangs onto his every word. Freeze your breath. Go on and freeze your brain. Try it. Number 5. Beautiful. Dear Diary, it's September 1st, 1989, and Veronica despairs over yet another year of high school carnage. The opening number sets the scene, introduces us to key characters, and foreshadows later events. Still, Veronica encourages audiences to strive to make life beautiful for everyone. If we change my we could change again We can be beautiful Ow! Just not today The song also answers a plot hole from the movie. When did Veronica join the Heathers and why? Murphy and O'Keefe used an asymmetrical beat to perfectly capture the chaotic high school experience Veronica describes. Why do they hate me? Why don't I fight back? Why do I act like such a creep? Why won't he date me? Why did I wear this? They used a measure of 3-4 bars rather than 4-4 four four so that characters could enter and leave abruptly, while new events could unfold at a moment's notice. That certainly sounds like high school to us. Number 
Number 4. I Say No This is the moment where Veronica tells JD she's had enough and sets herself free. This is it. Hit the break. I am finally awake. Let me be. Let me go. It's a powerful and poignant song that slots into the plot so seamlessly that it's hard to believe it wasn't there since day one. Still, its inclusion in the West End and subsequent productions is very welcome. Veronica has a lot of big numbers throughout the show, but this one is undoubtedly the most challenging, both vocally and emotionally. She compares her relationship with JD to being addicted to something you know is bad for you, but insists she's going to get clean. It's the final act of defiance we've all been waiting for, and it doesn't come a moment too soon. Just in time, I say no. So no, I say no. Number 3. 17 Is there anything quite like being 17 and in love? Although, hopefully you didn't have to present your SO with the same ultimatum Veronica gives JD. In this romantic ballad, she pleads with her boyfriend to stop playing God and instead just enjoy the things 17-year-olds typically like to do. We'll bake brownies or go bowling. Don't you want a life with me? Can't we be 17? It's beautiful and emotional and never fails to tug at our heartstrings. In the end, JD promises to try and mend his ways. Yeah, we're damaged, badly damaged, but your love's too good to lose. Hold me tighter, even closer. I'll stay if I'm what you choose. Unfortunately, this love story is doomed, and JD is too far beyond redemption. But Veronica isn't. Seventeen is reprised in the finale as the high schoolers set aside the past and celebrate what it means to be young and free. Number 2. Candy Store Even if you haven't seen Heathers, you've probably heard Candy Store, and what a bop. It's amazing how we gleefully sing along to a song that essentially justifies being the absolute worst. If you lack the balls, you can go play dolls. Let your mommy fix you a snack. Whoa! Heather Chandler convinces Veronica to play a trick on Martha just because she thinks it will be fun. Since Heather Chandler is a leader and not a follower, it was important to the writers that this song stand out. You can fly with eagles or if you prefer, keep on testing me. The result was thrashy, fierce, and reflective of Heather C.'s domineering personality. Like its lead singer, it compels you to give it your utmost attention. Candy Store is undeniably a crowd pleaser and an earworm you'll happily let live in your head rent free. It's my candy store. It's my candy store. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Dead Girl Walking Excommunicated, ostracized, and frustrated, Veronica walks the streets wondering what awaits her on Monday morning at school. Mid-thought, she comes by JD's window and climbs in, intending to seduce him. Yes, Heather says I got to go. You're my last meal on death row. Shut your mouth and lose them tight. Oh, I say. This is a pivotal moment in the plot as it begins their tempestuous relationship. O'Keefe and Murphy describe the tune as a melting pot of genres ranging from ACDC to Stevie Wonder and even Stephen Sondheim. Plus, any actress who takes on the role must have a robust set of pipes. In here it's beautiful. Let's make this beautiful. That works for me. Veronica reprises the number when she chases after JD to stop his explosive plans. Still, nothing compares to the original. It's powerful, passionate, magnetic, and blows our minds no matter how many times we hear it. No more time. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.